vile one, Mr. Grinch. You have termites in your smile. You have all the tender sweetness of a seasick crocodile, Mr. Grinch. Given the choice between the two of you, I'd take the, um, seasick crocodile. Mr. Grinch, you're the king of sinful sots. You're a heart so dead tomato clutched with moldy purple spots, Mr. Grinch. You're a three-decker sauerkraut and toadstool sandwich with arsenic sauce. <laughs> the icebox. He took the Who's feast. He took the Who pudding. He took the roast beast. He cleaned out the icebox as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took the last can of Who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. Now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. As the Grinch took the tree, as he started to shove, he, he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who was no more than two. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know, that old Grinch was so smart and so slick, he thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Hi, my sweet little tot, the fake Sandy Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that, that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, then I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child. Then he patted her head and he got her a drink and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who was in bed with her cup, he crept to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar, and the last thing he took was a log for their fire. On their walls he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. <laughs> then he did the same thing to the other Who's houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other Who's mouses. You nauseate me, Mr. Grinch. With a nauseous super nos. You're a crooked jerky chucky and you drive a crooked hoss, Mr. Grinch. Your soul is an appalling dump heap, overflowing with the most disgraceful assortment of rubbish imaginable. Mangled up, entangled up knots. Foul one, Mr. Grinch. You're a nasty, wasty skunk. Your heart is full of unwashed socks. Your soul is full of gunk, Mr. Grinch. 
the three words that best describe you are as follows, and I quote, stink, stank, stunk. It was a quarter of dawn, all the who's still abed, all the who's still a snooze, when he packed up his sled. Packed it up with their presents, their ribbons, their wrappings, their snoof and their fuzzles, their tringlers and trappings. thousand feet up. Up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip-top to dump it. He was grinchily humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the Who's down in Whoville will all cry, Boo-Hoo. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. He paused, and the Grinch put a hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. sounded glad. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes or bags. He puzzled and puzzled till his puzzle of a saw. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. Grinch's small heart 
grew three sizes that day. And then, the true meaning of Christmas came through, and the Grinch found the strength of ten Grinches, plus two. And now that his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. With a smile in his soul, he descended Mount Crumpet, cheerily blowing hoo-hoo on his trumpet. He rode into Whoville, he brought back their toys, he brought back their floof to the Who girls and boys. He brought back their snoop and their tringlers and fuzzles, brought back their pantukas, their dafflers and wuzzles. He brought everything back, all the food for the feast. And he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. Welcome, Christmas. Bring your cheer. Cheer to all who's far and near. Christmas Day is in our grasp, so long as we have hands to clasp. Christmas Day will always be just as long as we have we. Welcome Christmas while we stand, heart to heart and hand in hand. Today, children everywhere are making preparations for an event of world-shaking significance, the annual visit of Santa Claus. Informed sources report legions of junior citizens are making monumental efforts not to cry and not to bout. Meanwhile, letters by the thousands have been flooding postal facilities at the North Pole. Doggone thing always conks out when you... Well, hello there. Uh, my name's Special Delivery Kluger, SD for short. Oh, I've got lots of letters for Santa today. And every year they're the same. Some ask for toys, but a lot ask questions. Like you take this one. I bet one of you wrote it. Dear Santa, why are you wear a red suit? Uh-huh. I thought so. And this one. My turn. Dear Santa, why do you come down the chimney when I'm asleep? How about these? Why do you have whiskers? Why do you live at the North Pole? Why do you leave presents and... Why do you always come on Christmas Why is your sleep? sleep? Why is some dear girl call you Chris Kingo? Why? 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 Now, hold on, hold on. I can answer all your questions because I know everything about Santa. 